I think I just found the best writing tool for academics that writes entire literature reviews and introductions to papers so easily, and I reckon you haven't heard of it. It is Thesis AI. Here is Thesis AI. It's thesisai.io. That rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? But here we can see that it is the world's first AI assistant that can draft whole scientific documents. It has native LaTeX or LaTeX intra <coughs> integration. Oh. Getting too old for this, apparently. Native LaTeX integration, more than 20 languages. Consider existing uh, academic writing standards when using Thesis AI, you. Consider it, but then just use it. So this is Thesis AI. Um, I just want to get straight into it, really. So here you can click on chat, and it takes you to this page here. Um, this page is where everything happens. Now, there is a free version that I think you get up to 10 pages preview, but I actually paid for the top tier level because I'm just that rich, and I paid $22 to create two documents, up to 50 pages output, um, and also, yeah, output as PDF. You've got all of these things. The one thing I was interested in is this. Less than 25% AI detectability with zero GPT. We'll see about that. That test is coming at the end of this video. So the first thing um, you've got to do here is set up the sort of like filter that you want it to use to create your document. So here you go into citation style. Well, in the physics and chemistry and scientific world, we use I, E, E, E. Oh, I like saying that. I, E, E, E. And then citation level, whether or not you want it uh, just citing a paper or whether or not you want it to cite a page. Then you've got um, document language. In this case, it's English. And then temperature. Temperature is a really strange AI kind of like setting where zero is you just want it to be as strict and uncreative as possible. Keeping it at zero here just means that it's probably not going to go off on some wild, fanciful sort of like fictional journey. So keep it to zero. But if you want to, you can try increasing it if you are in a more creative field, I guess. But I'm going to keep it on zero. And then, as you can see, my payment was completed successfully. Then the first thing you need to do is upload up to 100 PDF references, or oh, I clicked it, um, up 100 PDF reference papers to be cited. Now, I uploaded 21. That is a two and a one. But there is so much more you can put into this, which is just so incredible. The one thing I like about this is that writing a literature review has never been easier. Check this out. So if I head over to something like Illicit and I say, what are the best OPV devices and new technology? Here's the summary. But this is what I'm interested in here is the list of papers it gives me. I can filter and just say, has PDF and in the last sort of like uh, 10 years, so from 2014 till now. And this simple filtering will give me a load of new papers that I can simply click here and get the PDF for. And I save them all into this folder just here. And this is all of the stuff that I wanted to write a literature review on. I haven't read any of them. You need to read them because you're doing this properly. I'm just doing it for a YouTube video. So these were all of the articles that I found. I haven't read them, but I want to put them in. So I click here and then I say, yes, I want all of that stuff. Let's have a look. Thesis AI. And we click here and then we say open. Oh, and we've got them all in as easy as that. And then we click upload and we play the waiting game while it uploads. It was relatively fast. So once this is all uploaded, it's a really simple thing. All you have to do is add one simple prompt just to tell it what you want. In this case, I wanted to know about the latest technology, the latest methods, the latest materials for indoor and outdoor applications. And that was it really. That's all I asked it to do. Um, it does take up to 30 minutes to produce the output, but you'll see that it's worth the wait. And you can do whatever you want in the meantime. You can go and eat stuff. You can go and not eat stuff. There we are. That's all of the stuff you can do. Um, but it is very, very simple. And you'll see that the output is actually pretty darn good. All right. So here is the next step where you can see, please provide a short description of the topic you want to write about. And in here, you just provide a very simple prompt. You don't have to go overboard. Just tell it what you want. Very simple. And it took me about 15 minutes, maybe a little bit less to get this output. And mm, oh, this is what we're all waiting for. Is it any good?
I think you'll be surprised. And this was the output. So here we've got a document that has contents and this is or LaTeX or LaTeX, which means you can open it in Overleaf and we'll talk about that in a moment. But here you can see that it's got all of the structures underneath each sort of like main heading. It's got three um, subheadings and I think it can go a little bit lower as well if there's enough information. You know, it can go three levels deep. Um, and it's a little bit sort of like regimented in the fact that each thing has got three under it. I'm not sure whether I like that. Oh no, this one's got two and this one's got two. I've told a lie. I'm lying to you. Um, but the, the fact that it's like three, 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 I don't know, maybe in a real literature of you, you don't keep track of that stuff. And so this kind of feels a little bit manufactured, but that's all right. We can look past that. It's actually given us 17 pages from uploaded 21 documents, but you'll see that it didn't use all of the documents. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I love this. You go through, it's given you a nice layout immediately, just like a thesis or just like the beginning of a paper. And so here it's given me an excellent title, which captures what I wanted perfectly. This is all editable in Overleaf. I'll show you in a minute, but this is the PDF that it, it spat out. And the development of, of organic photovoltaic devices has achieved substantial achievements through the incorporation of cutting edge materials Material. So the abstract starts nice and broad and down here the last thing this work highlights the critical importance of ongoing research and development enhancing So you can see that like the structure from a first glance is exactly what you would write And then we can dive a little bit deeper and this is what I love about it. let's zoom in zoom 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 um, Here you can see that it not only gives the references But it can do multiple references for a single reference here. It's got one to three here It's got three to five here. It's got three and and four, um, and it's just great. It's giving me exactly what I want as a first draft for a literature review or an introduction to a thesis or an introduction to a paper, just incredible. And you can see that it's just a load of text. I've read over it and you know, sometimes it's a little bit clunky, but we'll talk about how to get around that in a minute in Overleaf. Um, but overall, I was very, very impressed with the output. Do it for your um, field and your references and see what happens. So it goes on and on and on. I won't bore you by reading it, but the structure makes sense. The uh, information it's got in there makes sense. It's a perfect first draft. And if we go all the way down to the references and conclusions, so this is the conclusions here. Um, and here we go. References. It's got all of them that we need. And it used 16 references. That's interesting to me. So even though I thought all of the references I put in, all 21, were directly related to this paper, it's decided to only use 16. So if you want to use this for your own work, I think you really need to go above and beyond and put in a load of references max it out, put a hundred in, and it will probably filter out the ones that it can't quite squeeze in to its literature review. So, or its um, introduction or whatever, you know, you've asked it to write. So overall, I think this is just so very great, but it doesn't end there. Now, the one thing I don't like about loads of AI tools for academia and research is they force you to use their online editor, which just isn't very good. This is a LaTeX or LaTeX document, and you can see if we open it in Overleaf, we just get it fully editable and completely sort of like open to any changes you want to do. Absolutely love that. So the fact you can put it into something like uh, Overleaf and then do the normal code editing or the visual editing. And here is the piece de resistance, the cherry on top is that this is now integrated. I mean, Overleaf is integrated with Writeful. So you now get the ability to generate this with AI, put it into Overleaf and then have Writeful correct your text and make it more academic. Ah, uh, to be honest with you, it really doesn't get much better than that in terms of what academics really, really want. And so this is the, um, the, the file here and I can accept that and we can do a complete uh, overhaul. We can go through and have a look to see, okay, no impactful, well, that's fine. Under um, in low, okay, in low light conditions, except so you can go through the entire document and make it better so very easily. And you can go in and you can uh, change each individual reference and make sure that that lines up. So you're not forced into an online interface. You can use this in Overleaf and have a 100% customizable paper. Yes, at last, this is what we need. And I absolutely love that. Now, the last little bit I wanted to test is, does it pass AI testing and detection tools? Hmm, we were promised that for a little bit more money. Let's check it out. 
Now I want to see if this will pass AI detection, but whatever you say, whether or not you think it's just a big scam, universities and it's going to be publishers that are going to be using it, so it has to at least pass some level of AI detection um, test. And here it is. This is what I put in. I put in a little bit of the article and it says, we are highly confident this text was AI generated and it was 100% AI generated from, this is gpt0.me. But if I go over to something like, um, uh, zero, zero GPT. I've tried this and it didn't do quite as well. Let's go in, detect, and then you'll see that it doesn't sort of like, well, at least when I did it before vi uh, this video, um, you can see that it's only a 10.06% uh, chance that this was AI generated. So it's got these highlighted bits where it's like, well, this is probably AI uh, generated, but the large majority of it isn't. So depending on the detection tool you use will depend on your results. But I think the fact, the fact that it sort of like passes maybe one of them is good. Um, but there's no doubt that you should go into Overleaf and actually start, you know, changing it for yourself, making sure that it reads the way you want it to read, use Rightful to make it say more academic. But really that flow, that simple framework of getting PDFs, putting it into Thesis AI, getting an output, then go into Overleaf and complete sort of like changing the way it um, talks using your own language, double checking the references. I don't think it gets any easier or even as fun. Oh, dare I say it, as fun as that. All right, go check out Thesis AI for your stuff. If you want to know more about AI tools for literature reviews, check out this video where I talk about an AI tool that does your literature review in seconds. I think you'll love it.